something happened on Thursday, September 13th, 2012, that I think will be looked back on as one of the most historic moments detailing the era of collapse that we are now living in. Like I alluded to on Thursday while I was making my video then, the next video I was going to come back with today on Saturday was a video about the newly donned QE2 Infinity. And today I'm naming this video QE2 Infinity, The March to Collapse. This is because of an announcement by the Fed, the Federal Reserve privately owned Central Bank of America, on Thursday that they were going to initiate, based on poor jobs data that had come out, the continuation of Operation Twist with Quantitative Easing 3. Now, when I had first heard of quantitative easing, quantitative easing 3, I actually found out about it by looking at the silver and gold prices, which we'll get into later, and I said, holy shit, what happened? Well, it turns out that the Fed has announced they are going to engage in perpetual quantitative easing. Now, this means that they are going to be buying mortgage-backed securities to the tune of $40 billion a month, infinitely until the end of time or as we'll talk to later in the video the end of the currency until what Bernanke was saying they don't have any quantitative data but a qualitative until things look up until the job market gets turned around now we're gonna debunk this thing through and through I got some notes here on the front and the back which is uh, doesn't happen as often in these videos so we got a lot to get through so let's hop right into it now, firstly, Bernanke said that this was to create jobs. And if you watch the press conference he gave, it's 53 minutes long. Watch it if you want to be pissed off and see how really out of touch with reality this guy is. But he kept continuing to say, this is about employment and jobs creation. This is for Main Street. This is to get the average American worker back up off the ground. Anyways, that is a total lie. It's a total farce. This is nothing but a glorified way to prop up failed institutions. If these interest rates weren't at 0% and the rate of money was absolutely free, and if this quantitative easing, which is basically the Fed purchasing shit and taking it off the balance sheet of these terrible banks, also with Operation Twist where they're just buying the bonds of the US government and being their lender of last resort these banks would fail in a heartbeat now what it comes down to is something that Chris Martinson and Jim Sinclair and John Williams very great analysts have been saying for a long time and it was whenever people would get on the subject of currency devaluation these people would say based on historical precedents time and time again we see that in the case of defaulting to pay off a debt or money printing to pay off a debt even though it's never worked in history just based on the fact that it's been engaged in over and over again these people called for money printing ending in hyperinflation and the money printing has begun they have been right on point with that being said now what this money printing does is it creates more currency and devalues the currency now this is not hard to say that quantitative easing is going to continue to chip away at the, vo the value of the dollar. If you look at the US dollar index, it plummeted as soon as Bernanke announced QE3 to infinity. Meanwhile, silver jumped about $1.40 and gold had huge gains as well. And it just goes to show you that this trend is going to be continuing for a long time. It started back in 2001, the end of paper assets and finance. Uh, dollar denominated assets being the thing to have and the shift back into real assets with the collapse of this fiat currency which brings me well before I get into fiat currency there's one more point and this is the Chinese are now trading the dollar are trading their gold in yuans which means that they can buy and sell go or oil with their own currency now since the US was the reserve dollar of the world and continues to be to this day all oil was traded in US dollars even if China and Iran were making a trade it would be done with US dollars but this was a hundred percent back in the day of trades were made with the US dollar it has been getting chipped away at chipped away at chipped away at and this Chinese now dealing with their own currency is one of the last nails in the coffin with the value of the American dollar along with Ben Bernanke's announcement of QE for infinity 
Now, something most people don't realize, yet it should be common knowledge because how important it is, is that fiat currencies collapse. Every single one has since the beginning of time. There's not been a single fiat currency that has ever survived to live to this day. Now, the American dollar became a fiat currency in 1971, and I detail this a lot in the book. If you do the math that the average fiat currency's lifespan is 41 years and realize that the US dollar became a fiat currency in 71, it does not take very much complex math to see that the collapse of the US dollar isn't some, oh my god, unforeseen event. It's really on par and it's right on schedule too. You can't have a government that is $17 trillion in debt increasing its budget, increasing its budget deficit, current account trade deficits borrowing more and more money from its own privately owned central bank and think that it's not going to collapse. Ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely inevitable and anyone who tells you different is a total propagandist. That's all there is to it. Nonetheless, my professor, I had econ the next day and he did not even mention QE3 until infinity. And you know what? I think I have an idea why. And I think it's because he does not understand what it is or what it means. Just like he had to have everyone in the class explain to him what happened in 2008 last year. These neoclassicals, these professors, still don't get it. You, as a viewer of this channel, I can say with almost absolute certainty, unless you're just getting into this whole thing, have a greater understanding of economics than does my professor. And just on an aside, the messages that I get from you guys proves this point, I believe. Nonetheless, all this QE is going to do is increase stratification between the upper upper echelon of society, the banks and those who leech off of the banks, and the lower class, middle class, main street society. As inflation occurs, the price of living skyrockets, yet 0% interest, it bleeds the savers of all their money, yet subsidizes the speculation that occurs on Wall Street. And so the stratification that we've seen take off in recent years, all QE do, QE3 to infinity is going to do is perpetuate it and make it much, much worse, despite the lies of Bernanke. Now, if you want to see how out of touch this guy is with reality, watch the first 15, 20 minutes of that press conference. I'll throw a link in the description. He's literally telling people, journalists that are asking him questions, that one of the good side effects of QE will be that it's going to be jacking home prices up, according to his models. And he literally says that this is good, it'll get the economy started, because as people hold on to these assets, these homes that start going up in value, they'll feel richer and they'll start wanting to spend more and consume more and take on more debt. And he literally says... You know I talk about Pon Ponzi financing a lot. He literally says that people will be more inclined to purchase housing because they'll think that they're going to make returns on that asset. Where have we seen this before, ladies and gentlemen? Was this not the bankrupting of the entire U.S. citizenry that just occurred within this last couple years? The collapse of the housing bubble, and now he's trying to make it a housing bubble again? Wasn't it... Ponzi's speculation on housing that got us into this mess in the first place? That wasn't even three or four years ago. It was just one or two years ago that people finally figured this out. How is it that he's trying to put this forward as a strategy again? It's absolutely unbelievable. And when you realize that this is the guy who is the head of this, I'll even call the Fed of freaking vampire squid, when you realize that it's Bernanke's clueless ass at the helm of this thing, oh boy. The fact that people are going to starve from this is the real sad consequence. If it wasn't for people starving and dying, it would just be sad and pathetic. But the fact that people are literally going to face death because of this guy's imbecilic, if not criminal, actions? Wow, guys, I don't even know what to say about that. Nonetheless, I'm going to end this video here. The point I wanted to make with this video is that this announcement of QE3 to infinity is really an acknowledgement by the elites that they are going to kill the dollar. The US dollar is finished, it was on the ropes for a long time, and all this QE3 does is say, yes, we are acknowledging that in the past, time and time again, people have undergone this saltwater thinking where they think money printing is like drinking water,
but it's really salt water and they drink more and it makes them more thirsty but it feels good but they have to drink more and drink more and invariably it ends in a terrible manner this QE3 seals the fate for the dollar it's over the movement into real assets especially precious metals gold and silver two of the easiest to get your hands on is fully underway this you know 1800 gold 30 silver it's gonna start rocketing from this point ladies and gentlemen nonetheless this is Anthony Mayfield signing out for another on the brink book commentary join me again on Tuesday when I'll come back with something more that's happening it's probably gonna be the upcoming recession that Canada is facing nonetheless I'm out of here guys take care